In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. Forty days after Christmas, let us open our hearts to the light of God and his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. The word of the Lord. from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help the angels but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God saying, now master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. On this feast of the presentation of the Lord, it is 40 days after Christmas. And one of the most uh, common symbols, again, the most prominent symbols in this feast is uh, candles, or candles. Uh, in your parishes, you may be, uh, again, have uh, this, to this mass, you can celebrate with a procession of candles, and uh, some parishes may even have candles that are blessed that are given out to everyone. Uh, the idea is that the symbol of light and it seems appropriate because if you think about it, my most earliest memories of, of Christmas, especially in the neighborhood, was lights. You know, houses uh, lit up, you know, all over. You know, in certain neighborhoods, you know, people competing with, you know, who can have the best display, but it was always, and of course, that it was only something that, that you notice or, or you really saw the beauty of it at night. Uh, you know, houses, lights on your house when it's a bright sunny day, you hardly notice because they really aren't necessary. Lights really are necessary when it's dark. And so even the idea of having candles and holding candles and processioning with candles, the idea is that again, that there's a light that you have, that you're called to be light. Because here's the thing, if the world is filled with darkness, the problem's not the darkness. People curse the darkness all the time. You know, there's evil and there's injustice and there's greed and there's exploitation, there's abuse, there's horrible things and murder and terrorism and many terrible things, shootings and oh, the darkness, the darkness. Let me say it again. If the world is filled with darkness, the problem is not the darkness. The problem is the light. Darkness by definition is the absence of light. And so how do you solve the problem? If you go home at night and you come and it's a dark house, you don't just stumble and trip, you just flick the switch and problem solved, light. You know, people have sports events, night games, and that field or that court is as bright as it is daytime. No problem when you have light. And so that's what we remember as we recall on this feast of the presentation of the Lord, 40 days after Christmas, you know, another nickname for this uh, feast is Candlemas. The idea is that, again, that just as Mary and Joseph, you know, presented Jesus in the temple, in a sense, they processed him, they carried him to the temple, so we are reminded that we have the same responsibility. You see, it's really, to sum it up, it's like God presented Christ to us in the incarnation. He, gave, he so loved us, he gave his son. And then we were invited to receive the gift, but we couldn't stop there. No, see, we're church. We're the body of Christ. We're called to 
present the gift to the world. Jesus is that greatest of gifts that we cannot keep to ourselves. That is the heart of evangelization. When, you know, Jesus was born, the prophet said he would be called the light to the nations. He would be a light to the nations. And at the end of his ministry on earth, the risen Christ, the great commission, when he said, go make disciples of every nation. But instead of simply a candle procession, we have mass every day. And in the mass, we process to the altar and we're invited to receive the gift of Christ from the altar. But let us not stop there because the love in your heart was not put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy, Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn in faith to our Heavenly Father as we offer our prayers and petitions. For the mission of the church, may she be a light to those who live in the darkness of unbelief, and show the way to fullness of life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian mothers, like Mary, who brought her infant son to the temple, may they lead their children by their love and practice of the faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage, and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for a deeper personal love of Christ in the community. May we come to know Jesus as our God and King and our cherished companion in life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, through the light of your grace, we have made our prayers to you, trusting you will always hear them. We offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for your, for your eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, with the clergy and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. 
Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. By these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we go forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Full final blessing, just like to first thank all those who make the, the, the television mass possible where we can uh, even for those of you who are, are at home that's still able to participate in this great, wonderful feast as we celebrate the presentation of the Lord. Uh, our, so those uh, who are behind the cameras uh, that make it possible for you to see us. Uh, and uh, we thank for those uh, at the Basilica of the National Shrine Immaculate Conception. Uh, we thank our, our choir from uh, 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 St. Uh, um, Paul VI, Paul VI uh, Catholic uh, uh, High School. Uh, in, um, 
uh, Fairfax, and uh, also our, our deacon uh, is also from Holy Spirit Parish, uh, from uh, Annandale, Virginia, and our deacon Walker uh, from St. Luke's uh, here right close to D.C. And uh, as always, you know, one of my favorite songs as a kid uh, was in church was This Little Light of Mine. And it's always This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let the light in you shine, because the world really needs it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. The B-52, it, it's really a, a magnificent beast movements, the lights, it's something that sticks with you. When I was a kid, I was really inspired by the combat service of my father. When the opportunity arose as a B-52 pilot to go overseas, I, I put my name in the hat as quickly as I could. My grandfather had joined the Knights of Columbus during World War II, and freshman year, I really felt called to join. While I was deployed to Qatar, I also noticed that there was a great number of care packages that were going unused. I had the opportunity to work with deployed Knights of Columbus. We took that off base to help the hundreds of thousands of migrants in Qatar. I think today more than ever, we need men that are dedicated to charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. And I'm proud to be a Knight of Columbus.